Hello, I am Bentham and welcome back to Factorio Towns. In the previous episode we finished off by setting up some new defences on Fracken, which hopefully uh, we'll be able to deal with the biters a little bit better than the uh, the system has been so far. We now have a whole bunch of flamethrowers that should uh, prevent the biters from getting uh, so close to the turrets anymore. And uh, they have a continuous supply of, uh, of oil, hopefully, so uh, we shouldn't have any more problem with them running out of ammo either. But um, I decide anyway to deal with some of the biter bases nearby. There's one in particular that's quite close but also quite small. So I grab the tank and I make my way over to find that it has been built up a little bit. It seems that a new base has been built basically on top of the other one and it is now significantly stronger than it was before and perhaps a little bit too strong for me to deal with right now because um, I only have enough ammo to deal with a very small base and um, need to resupply pretty urgently. But uh, we see it in action a little bit there, the defensive system, and it seems to work pretty well. I don't think any damage is done to the wall, so that is a very good sign. And we'll have to leave that and see how it goes, and see how much oil is used up as well. Whether it's particularly um, bad in terms of its uh, actual usage of oil. Because uh, we don't have that much production going yet, we've got, like, we've just boosted it, but uh, we still need it for other things. But anyway, we go over to Jobra to check up on the situation with uh, modules where we find that actually they're all made, surprisingly, so we now have um, everything we need and I start immediately crafting the uh, the level 2 power suit and I'll uh, equip that a little bit later on, but the thing is we don't have any of the equipment for it yet, we don't have any of the shields or the batteries or the, uh, the power cores or anything like that, so I go over to West Point so that we can start looking at how we can get that set up. We know that we need uh, advanced circuits, processing units and batteries, um, as well as electronic engines, but we don't need those quite yet because they're for the exoskeleton legs. So I don't have to set up that uh, quite yet, which is good because I don't know what I'm going to do with that. I don't know what exact town I would have electric engine production in, because at the moment engine production is um, in the main area and it shouldn't be. It should be in like a steel town or something, so I'll have to work that out. But in the meantime we can uh, work with what we have and uh, just get a really bulky shielded suit and that should be good. But um, while I was in West Point, I was waiting for the ammo train to turn up that comes in from Fortin. And when I checked up on its location, I discovered that we have a gridlock over by Chipton, um, where basically there were too many trains trying to get into or out of Chipton at once, and it's all ground to a halt. And I was worried about this when I was setting it up, but I decided it would probably be okay, because I left, a, uh, I left enough space for a train to fit in between the junction and the station, but unfortunately there were just too many at once and it's all just stopped. Luckily, I find a, a way to sneakily make enough room for the trains to get through without um, interfering too much with uh, with them and having to reverse them all over the place. They just squeeze two in a little bit closer and it uh, makes enough space. But we will have to keep an eye on that because uh, that's the sort of thing that can start happening now that we have uh, this many trains operating around that area. Uh, I mean, I think that was like most of the trains we have all getting stuck in that at once, so it's not too likely that that'll happen very often, but uh, it's happened once, it can happen again. And um, at the moment, there's no particularly good solution to the problem. Uh, I think the best way would be to change like where some of these trains go, maybe change what stations they park up in and things like that. At the moment, we can park some trains down in uh, Southbridge, maybe, and have some things delivered to and from there for the uh, circuit production or something like that. Or we could even set up some new stations in the, the West Chipton area just to... Uh, alleviate some of the um, some of the, the traffic or whatever from uh, the main bit and that was sort of the plan I had all along of sort of expanding out Chipton because it was always going to be the busiest station and unfortunately I've also put it right next to the busiest junction in the uh, in the system so it's probably the busiest junction because it's next to the busiest station uh, but anyway we go back to West Point to uh, carry on with what we're doing. The train has now uh, arrived and resupplied and everything so we can grab some more ammo from here. I could go up to Fortin and get it that way, but seeing as uh, I'm going to be working on the production over here anyway, it makes a bit more sense to be over here. But uh, even after hoovering up the contents of the belts again, I'm still a little bit short on ammo, so I just end up setting up a proper ammo storage system so that we can actually uh, build up a supply that we can just grab uh, a bunch of when we arrive, rather than having to take it out of the system and resulting in not being able to actually go into the turrets like it's supposed to here. Anyway, another inspection of the uh, the inserters, basically working out which ones need which uh, materials and stuff, and also whether there's any in particular that are needed more than others. Uh, but basically it comes down to just getting as many um, processing units, advanced circuits and uh, batteries as possible, though it does seem like processing units 
are the uh, the most needed, just because they're like uh, involved in all of the higher level uh, production stages, like all the level two stuff, like the batteries and the uh, shields. I think need them, and um, also you need very large amounts for the power cores. But I might just make the power cores like by hand because I'll probably only ever need two of them, and then I'll not bother again. But anyway, we've hopped in the uh, the tank that we have parked over in West Point because we want to build a new section of rail to connect West Point up to Flaskmere. The trains can get from uh, one to the other, but uh, it's a bit of a roundabout trip, and it goes via the uh, the Chipton Junction, and thus makes things a little bit more awkward over there. So if we can bypass that, that would be uh, convenient. Uh, but unfortunately, there are a couple of biter bases in between us and our uh, destination, so we'll have to... Uh, make use of the old turret creep method and uh, we now have a decent supply of ammo again I've got like uh, 10 stacks back in the car and 10 stacks on my person and uh, that should be more than enough to uh, deal with two bases so I just start advancing forward putting in uh, three turrets at a time I've noticed recently it seems like the the tank like turning rate has slowed down so rather than sort of weaving about as much as I, I have done in the past I'm just running like a straight line and building the turrets alongside me as I go and uh, as we get into range, we have a couple of big attacks uh, hitters. And uh, now the bases have started spawning behemoth biters, which makes things quite awkward. You can see one of the turrets there is at basically zero health. That was a very close shave. Um, a behemoth just ran straight at it and started tearing it up before the uh, uh, the other turrets could deal with it. And that is a problem with, like, they're very good at just, like, reaching the defensive line before the defensive line can stop them. And uh, all you need is, like... Uh, the ability for each behemoth to do a little bit of damage and slowly but surely they will wear down your defenses but uh, this one has been dealt with uh, easily enough we used some poison capsules to take out the uh, the worms and then just uh, ran by all the uh, the spawners till they were down and we can move on to the next one but the next one is a little bit bigger uh, I think there's just a little bit more in the way of spawners and worms I noticed there was a very large number of, uh, of large worms and not many of any other kind so uh, it was definitely a job for like a full volley of, uh, of four poison capsules, which seems to be enough to deal with anything. Though as I'm building uh, up this line, I'm f I forgot to actually make any new capsules, so I think I only have one on me at the moment. And so I'll have to make a few more to actually uh, be able to deal with the, uh, the biters here. And also as I'm setting up this line, they start blowing up the turrets. I've not put them dense enough, it appears, because um, I was having a little bit more of a, of a space between each one until I was actually in range of the biters. And um, that meant there just weren't enough firing at once to uh, to deal with the uh, the behemoths running in. But we managed to establish a more stable situation, and uh, we're just waiting a moment to craft the uh, uh, the poison capsules, and then waiting a little bit longer so that we can actually uh, attack when there aren't a bunch of biters running at us. And uh, unfortunately, because of this, we really start burning through our ammo supply. This uh, line stays in place a little bit longer than it's supposed to. And uh, then suddenly, they all start running out of ammo at once. The whole front line uh, uses uh, up their supply at the same time. But luckily, I'm, I'm able to uh, resupply it quick enough, and it happened during a, a lull in the attacks. And then we can just run around and uh, finish off the base. There was one big uh, worm left, but uh, it was half dead anyway, so we could just deal with it using the, uh, uh, the gun on the tank without too much trouble. We can see there all of the other turrets run out of ammo at the same time there. So yeah, if you hang around too long when battling behemoths, then you can suddenly find that all your ammo runs out. Like so far I've been putting uh, 25 ammo into each turret and I might need to stop putting 50 in each one now, just so that uh, I don't have to worry about that. But anyway, we've arrived at our destination of Flaskmere, just in time to see a biter attack on it. Um, it was dealt with fairly easy, though the turrets here are starting to suffer, so uh, I decided to do a bit of a... Uh, fixing up and resupplying. We uh, we fill in this corner here, this was something that happened uh, a little bit ago, the biters managed to blow up the turret there, so I just uh, put three in its place so that um, it can actually deal with the attacks next time. And then I just even out the ammo supplies and uh, refill the turrets uh, along the wall. I don't have I, like, I don't have any extra ones because it seems like it doesn't need it because there aren't actually that many biters attacking this particular wall at the moment. The pollution has receded by quite a bit, though I think that might just be because there are so many biter bases inside the pollution range anyway that they're all absorbing it before it can go any further but it means that uh, there aren't that many attacks actually on Flaskmere it's practically uh, beyond the pollution and everything's happening mostly over at uh, Chipton and Frackham and the sort of more central ones really uh, but anyway we've now got the, the well one of the two uh, lines connected up and we're starting to put in the uh, the power poles and the lights and the signals and so on so that we have this uh, properly functional 
We'll have some redundant connections so that if we uh, have another incident like we had last episode where one of them blew up a light on the uh, the rails connecting the um, connecting West Point to Chipton, that uh, there isn't any danger of us actually losing power. Luckily, it was only a light and not the power pole. But uh, if they just put a little bit to the left, uh, then we would have lost power to West Point, which is it wouldn't have been a huge problem because there's not much actually going on in terms of power. But the the stone supply would have stopped, which would have been annoying. And uh, if there were some particularly crazy biter attacks, it might have caused some trouble for the ammo supply or whatever. Though um, that would only be sort of a long-term problem with uh, power failures. But anyway, we uh, start running these uh, power lines back along, connecting it all up, and then we'll just uh, like run up and down it a couple of times, putting in all the infrastructure stuff and um, making it a fully operational rail. It, we probably need to worry about like that much about the... Um, uh, the signals and stuff, because I think there will only be one train running along here, not even for its uh, its whole journey. So uh, it's just in case later on more things come along here. It would be good to use this line more often, because it would mean potentially less use of the uh, the chips and junction. Um, in fact, it might make some sense to actually like upgrade the chips and junction and have some bypasses and stuff on it, so that uh, we don't have any more trouble. Uh, like, because like some of the trains there weren't actually involved in chips, and they were just passing by. So um, in that way, we could have them not get involved in the uh, in the problems. But the uh, the track is now fully in place, so we take the tank uh, back to uh, West Point. Its job is done, and we can go and start putting in the train. Unfortunately, we don't have any engines on us. We've got like 10, and we need, I think, 20 or something to make a, an actual engine, so I'll have to go back to the, uh, the main area to grab some of those so I can make them, and then we can actually start setting up the train to deliver the stuff. And then hopefully sooner rather than later we can actually have the power suit components ready because I'm actually equipped with this power suit now. It's just that I don't have anything I can put in it, so it's just really good armor uh, until I can uh, get that sorted. But uh, perhaps by uh, the end of next episode we might have enough made. I'm not sure how long it's going to take to make some of the uh, the uh, the shields and stuff. I know that like the shields and batteries take quite a long time to make because they um you have to make ten small ones and then craft the big one. So for every single battery, there are 11 crafts, and they're all really slow. So uh, it, that'll still be a problem for the uh, uh, the assemblers as well as uh, my inventory. Because like quite often, I try and make the uh, uh, the shields in my inventory and realize it's not a good idea because it's that's just my crafting bar um, occupied for like half an hour trying to make just a few of the uh, the shields. Uh, but anyway, while we're passing through West Chipton, I realize that the iron supply is starting to dwindle a little bit. The uh, like All of the miners are running at once, which is not a good sign, particularly considering that at the moment we have a copper shortage, and uh, we're having to import copper from uh, Julebra, so clearly we can we should just like add a couple more miners, so that's not a problem over here anymore. And um, in order to do that, I have to move the, uh, the defensive line down a bit, but that should be fine. Let's me uh, reset things. I've put 50 ammo into each of the turrets so that they... Uh, it should last a good long while, because the, the biters really love attacking West uh, Chipton, and uh, for some reason I've never bothered setting up the defences properly. But uh, we go back up to the main area to grab the uh, the engines that we need so we can make the train, and uh, then we go around getting all the stuff for the cargo wagons as well. And then we just need to find someone to actually build the train, because uh, we want to pick a patch of the, uh, the rail network that's not in use, and everything is in use, so... Um, I'll have to go down to like uh, Flaskmere, I, I, pretty much the the line between Flaskmere and uh, West Point, the new one, to actually put it in without interfering with anything. But uh, just before I do that, I remember that I need a bit of coal. I've been using up like all the supply in my inventory for a while, uh, just resupplying cars and tanks and stuff. And with us being about to build a train, we probably want a bunch of coal to actually put into the train uh, when it sets off. So we just go over to Colbury and resupply that. While I'm over there, I notice that we are now uh, using the uh, the full capacity of the steam engines here, which is a little bit of a worry, so we will need to build some new ones, or perhaps start using solar panels or whatever, um, if we don't want things to get a little bit worse. At the moment, it's only, like, we're still running at, like, 95% of what our um, power requirements are, so it's not a huge problem yet, and I decided to leave it because it will generate pollution and cause issues for Southbridge and things like that, so um, I basically pretend the problem isn't there for the moment. Uh, I also just want to get this train sorted. I want to get the, the power suit components done so we can actually deal with the uh, the biters perhaps once and for all. Nearly once and for all. Somewhat there. But uh, I started setting up this train 
over on the uh, the Flaskmere eastbound station because currently that is completely unused that we could perhaps use it for the uh, the supplying of um, the advanced circuits, not the advanced circuits, the processing units from uh, Flaskmere. Uh, but you may be noticing if you're paying a particular amount of, uh, of attention to the menus that uh, I've accidentally left a mod installed, the uh, equipment slots mod, which I demonstrated recently in my uh, uh, a Q and A live stream. I uh, forgot to actually switch it off for this, so uh, that's still operational, but I just don't use it and uh, remember to switch it off at the end of this. But it means that uh, all of the, the trains, cars and tanks have uh, a 10x10 equipment slot grid in them. So if I actually had some shields and batteries and exoskeleton legs and things, I could put them into the vehicles and uh, they would actually affect the vehicles in the way that they affect the player, which is pretty cool. But um, we'll save that for uh, some future modded playthrough. Um, I imagine I will use it if I do a modded one because that is quite a fun one to mess around with having um, like hyperspeed trains and stuff like that and trains that can shoot passing biters is, is pretty cool uh, but anyway we've got the um, the trains set up now basically we just need to go around the, the various stations and actually set up the loading of the equipment um, yeah it goes from uh, West Point over to Flaskmere uh, and then at the moment it goes up to um, to Frackham and then on to Redport mm -hmm. Uh, resupplying, uh, respectively, with um, processing units, batteries, and advanced circuits before looping back round to uh, West Point to unload them. And I imagine we won't be able to get a decent throughput here because all of these things are in short supply, uh, basically because of the problem with copper over in Chipton. But um, it'll be enough to start working on things. We don't need a huge amount uh, of material to make all of the different components. So as long as we get some supply through, we can still actually outfitting our power suit a bit and uh, becoming a bit more of a, a formidable fighter and uh, we can perhaps uh, no longer need to rely on the tank and hopefully we'll outgrow the tank basically um, even though we haven't even set up tank shells yet um, which reminds me people keep asking why I don't use tank shells why I don't use um, like all sorts of random little things like laser turrets and stuff and why there's just a bunch of things that I have access to but I never actually build and use that could help me uh, against the biters and in various other areas and the answer almost um, every single time is that it breaks the rules basically I've never properly laid out the exact rules of, uh, of towns because they're basically just in my head and they'd be a bit fiddly to actually set up properly because it's a, it's a lot a lot of it's sort of subjective but basically because I don't have a town that builds uh, laser turrets or electric engines or anything like that I don't have them and until I build a town which I feel would like which I feel is allowed to do that, I won't actually um, set that up and I limit myself in that way because at the moment like, I, I've not set things particularly difficult in terms of the map settings, it's all about the uh, the difficulty is in the rules that I impose on myself and uh, they are the rules, what, like uh, I, I would need to build a special town if I wanted to make uh, tank shells, I wouldn't just make tan tank shells, it would make like various different kinds of, uh, of like, speci like special munitions basically and it would be like a fort town uh, over in, say, the uh, the southeast. But at the moment I've not done that. I could go do that if I really wanted to, but I'm focusing on other things, and that is why um, I'm not bothered with it. And yes, it would be a lot easier if I did it, but um, in in this particular context, it is, it's sort of cheating, uh, basically. Self-imposed difficulty. It's like a Nuzlocke, basically. Uh, but anyway, the train is now operational, it's going to all the stations it should do. There was a little bit of, uh, of weirdness when I uh, decided to change which uh, Frackham station it visited, rather than the uh, the northbound one. I set it to the southbound one because that already has some uh, some battery loading set up. But then it ended up going like all the way around past like Colbury and stuff, and uh, through Redport down to Frackham, which it really didn't need to do, but whatever, it got where it needed to go eventually. And now the, um, the schedule is probably set up, and I've just finished setting up the... Uh, uh, the supply of batteries to the forward cargo wagon and now everything should be working we can just send it off to uh, West Point and uh, the power suit production should commence once we actually have the uh, the belts properly lining up with the um, uh, with the assemblers and everything and so we set off and I realize that there is a little bit of a problem with the schedule because at the moment the train does go via the Chipton uh, Junction when it goes back to West Point so I should probably do some messing about with that so it, it stays out of the way of there because uh, it's just going to make more problems if it uh, carries on going through that. But uh, for the moment it will do. We've got the, the materials being delivered and we can connect them up. Though um, 
we have a very small number of uh, processing units and advanced circuits, of course, because of the uh, the issues with the circuit supply. So I think that's what we'll probably work on next. Try and sort out the copper lines, um, like get some copper being delivered in from Redport or something like that, so that we can actually get a decent supply of uh, circuits again and get this going a little bit quicker. Uh, because we need a lot of processing units for the power suit stuff, all of the uh, as I said, the uh, the level 2 batteries and the level 2 shields. And we also need like 100 per power core, which we'll have to make as well, before we can actually start using any of the equipment. So uh, that's a, a bit of a priority. But uh, we get uh, everything lined up, we get the inserters in place, and production does commence on a couple of little things. Uh, we'll make sure to set the train in motion again and uh, get it bringing in a, a nice steady supply. And hopefully sooner rather than later, we will finally be able to deal with the biters. But with that, I should say goodbye, thank you for watching, and I shall see you next time.